What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode, the really the first episode. Is it okay to say the virgin episode? I don't know if that's appropriate or not. But nonetheless, well, here we are. Here we are. You know, whoo, child, do we need to pause for station identification? Because, friend, this thing here is just super deep. But it's conversations that we've been shouting around, we've been walking around, and we're wondering why so many people aren't happy, right? Got all this trauma, they got all this stuff, they're out of balance, they're out of whack, and we can dialogue about this. But is it really possible for you to spend a large chunk of your life, watch this, happy? Woo! Some of the same struggle with this. Ooh, child, was that heavy. My, 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 my. I feel like I just need like some ice cream or some dessert or something, some power shopping. Um, but in all seriousness, y'all know what I say repeatedly. Sometimes we got to deal with that heavy in order to get on over here to the happy. What's up, everybody? This is Ashley Johnson here with Happy Hour, where we are really going to help you to discover your happy, how to harness it, and realize that sometimes it might be a little heavy in order to get to the happy. So um, I really think that it's critical that we define what happiness really means to me, right? I get so many people that come to me, I just want to be happy. Um, tears flowing. I just, I just, I, I, I'm missing out on things. I, I, I just, I just want to be happy. And then you got the other side. You got the religious, the super extra. And this is, this is no judgment on anybody, but the super extra people that will tell you, God never called you to be happy. God gave you joy. Joy comes in the morning, but you're supposed to spend all night miserable. Nobody is really supposed to be happy. Well, I disagree. Um, I believe the whole counsel of the word of God. When God said, happy is the people whose God is the Lord. I decided that since he is my Lord, that I was going to make that like a thing for me. Happiness is my thing. It's going to be a thing for me. And I believe I'm not the only one um, that really is saying, I just really want to know how not to just be limited to the joy that's only going to come in the morning. But can I get some happiness that's going to last all day? I mean, what? What? I want the joy in the morning. But can I get some happiness that's going to last all day? So listen, um, we were in um, Hawaii. And we kept telling the drivers every time we walked out. Of course, obviously, we were a little bit green. And by green, I mean... We really didn't pay attention that it's beautiful there all year long, right? And so we would come out and we would just be mouth open and say, man, it's so beautiful. And then we would tell the concierge and the butlers, we would say, oh, it's just so beautiful here. Isn't it a beautiful day? And everybody would look at us so crazy. And finally, I whispered to my mom, I said, do you notice they looking at us some type of way? And finally, the Uber driver turned and said these words. He said, you know, um, it's nice that you're asking us and, and saying that it's a beautiful day, he said, every day is a beautiful day. 97% of the time, the weather pre presents us a beautiful day. And y'all, that thing stuck with me. That 97%, is it possible? Y'all just go here with me and we can dialogue about this, but is it really possible for you to spend a large chunk of your life, watch this, happy. Woo. Some of the same struggle with this. We got so many individuals who I truly believe have perfected suffering, but they struggling with raining. They have perfected the, the, the morning time joy only, but they're going to be in hell all the rest of the day. I just, I don't believe that that is God's best for us. So um, how do we harness happy? One of the things is determining what does happiness look like for me? And what I found is my definition of happy may not match yours. Some people want to be millionaires and that's what's up. Some people may just say, hey, I just want to make sure my bills are paid on time. My needs are met. Um, I can travel when I want to travel. That may not look an equal millionaire, but that is my definition of happy. So for many of you, I want you to first determine, okay, what is my definition of happiness? What does happiness look like? Watch this to me. Clean your lens on your glasses from all this suffering. Oh, yes, I said it. From all this struggle. Oh, yes, I said it. 
and allow yourself to just for a minute think about what it would be like if you were genuinely happy. Now I'm going to step here and I'm going to ask the question as I put my feet up. I'm going to ask this question to many of you and I want you to genuinely answer. Are you really happy? Ooh. <laughs> I mean, like, take a moment and really look at areas of your life. Are you just always pushing? Oh, this is good. Are you always pressing? Are you always trying to make sure everybody else is good? And then you say, as long as they're good, I'm good. No, let's let's talk about, can, can we all be good? Or well, can we all get along? So I want you to ask yourself, am I really, really happy? And if I'm not, what am I gonna do about it? So I wanna say these things to you. Just give us a couple of things just to jump off today. I feel like this is a juicy subject because I have never seen so many people that say they love God that ain't happy. Oh, I said it on here. I, I said it. I preach multiple places. I encounter thousands of people. And guess what? So many individuals, especially in the body of Christ, are not happy. And guess what? We got all these flowery shows and I love it. I be excited. We dancing in. Oh, we dancing out. And I think it's great because we're going to do all of that here on this show. But then I've also found that some of the deep subjects that are stopping people from really being happy, we skirt around. Because sometimes we don't want to go through the heavy in order to get to the happy. So you got to define what happiness looks like to you. I remember being in a toxic relationship years ago. Oh God, thank you. Somebody, if you, if he done brought you out of at least one, you ought to be just doing like this. Lord, thank you. Here. <laughs> and but I remember going to a wedding in Dallas. I will never forget it. And the toxicity of the relationship and the fact that I wasn't happy made me numb and I didn't even know it until I got into a setting where the couple was genuinely happy. And I remember being on the dance floor, feeling like I was in a movie in slow motion, looking around watching how they really looked at each other, how they were really friends, how they really loved each other, how they were really willing to have each other's back. And by the way, they still married. Oh, there it is. And I realized that happiness is not a facade. There are people where their lives may not be perfect, but there are people that are genuinely happy. It ain't fake, it ain't a put on. So many people encounter me. Is this, are you real? Are you really like this? Baby, this me 24 nine here. Because I made a decision, something happened to me that day. I started looking around and I said, wait a minute. This happiness right here is real. Not only is it real, but I want it. And I want this kind of happiness, may not be all day every day, but I want to be happy and experience some parts of happiness in my life every day. And baby, when I tapped that fountain and started defining what happiness looked like to me, my life began to change. So I really want you to think about what is the definition of happiness for you. So finally, I want you to detail that happiness. This is where a lot of people get lost. Why? Because we are so afraid to put down what we really want. When you ask people, what do you really want? Um, you know, and I have found that a lot of people who don't really know what they want, they end up in default. Let me tell y'all something. I had some court paperwork on my desk. I remember I was going through a divorce and yeah, yeah, she on here talking about happy and she divorced. Baby, I'm not the only one here. God has done a work. But I have to be real because so many of you guys are looking at so many people that are on social media and they smiling and they faking and it ain't real happiness. I'm not judging them, but I'm telling you what I know. I'm looking at a set of divorce papers. I'm grieving because I didn't get married to get divorced, right? And so I got the paperwork in and I slid it to the side. Every day I refused to look at it. I slid it to the side. The Holy Ghost spoke to me and said on a very specific day, he said, you need to open that envelope and you need to open the envelope. Somebody say today. Oh, somebody say today. I opened up the envelope. I started to read and I got upset and I slid it to the side. The very next night, I heard the word default come out of my spirit almost in my sleep. 
I got up the next morning. It was so strong. I literally started looking up what did default mean. Basically, you're going to be subject to somebody else's terms if you don't stand up and kind of literally take a stand for what you really desire. If you don't say what you desire, you're going to live by default. The court is going to determine what you going to get if you don't speak up for what you really desire. Y'all, I went back to the paperwork. This is a true story. I did not know that I had to respond to the paperwork that day. And if I didn't respond and get it postmarked that day, the court was going to call my case default. That meant I didn't have any more options. Come on, y'all. That meant I couldn't complain about what I got. Come on. That meant that I couldn't be frustrated about what I didn't get because I never spoke up with what I really wanted. Why? Because I was going to be in default. And how many of us are living our lives in default? You don't know what you want. You are afraid to find out. You scared to detail. Cause sometimes if I detail what I want, that means somebody might be left out. Oh, I gotta define my happy y'all. But then I gotta detail my happy. Cause if I don't, I might just find myself living in default. Listen, it's God's desire for us to be happy. You can't be happy all the time, friend. Circumstances are one thing. Happiness is a choice. And I have decided that I am going to be happy, live happy, spread happy, give happy, baby. It's happy hour, y'all. Let's get it. This season on happy hour. What's up, everybody? Here we are. Did y'all see? It's like an inner opera singer came out of me. Something fresh just hit me. I don't know if it's this yellow or I'm what. Go ahead. Listen, just let the cat out the bag. This one is going to be juice. It's going to be so good. Now, I am going to pause because I will do a whole nother podcast about energy. Because even the word energy offends some of the saints. Woo, if you say energy... And if you say manifestation, baby, the people's is tight. And I know so how one to of speak, the things but I, I hear from everybody, especially here lately, is soft girl season. I don't want struggle season. I want to know how to tap into my feminine energy. When am I in balance and when am I out of balance? As a Christian, should I even be in balance at all? It's so much. I always like to come from a real place. Because uh, sometimes you guys see people who are on the platform and it looks like they are dressed up and they've really not had any struggles and they've really not had any issues, especially, let me just move this mic a little bit so I can clap, especially um, in the religious I've scene. been hearing, um, it's been on social media and TikTok and um, IG and everywhere else where people are saying, Lord, please don't give me the struggle gospel. Lord, I want this to be soft girl season. I don't. I need this to be where I can rest, where I can get a break, where I'm not climbing up the rough side of the mountain. So um, let's talk about it. Let's dive into it. There are a whole lot of folks right now that's on the motherboard. And now you might got eight of nine baby daddies. Now that, let me turn this phone over because that don't went messy quick. Since everybody's hollering about this is soft girl season, really what does that look like i want to kind of help you journey and find out how to walk out happy somebody shout every single day oh oh i went a little low i went every single day did y'all see i did that it blessed me <laughs> ain't got no grace for the girl that's in a toxic relationship right now because see right now you done got cleaned up what <laughs> Make sure that you are following me, subscribing, liking, all of that good jazz. I am the Ashley Johnson. I want to make sure that you're clicking the subscription button. Are we going to be together? Are we going to be together? I'm like, this is already strong. <laughs> it is. Woo, but it's real. Welcome back, everybody. Listen, um, I know we got some good tidbits from today, right? Um, I have decided, I know some of you are like, what, what, what? Pastor Ashley, girl, what? First of all, mind your business. <laughs> that hurt somebody. I already know I did. I already know um, that hurt somebody. But um, I love pretty things, you know, pretty dishes and plates and all sorts of things. And I do love a beautiful cocktail martini glass. I do. Judge yourself. But one of the things, um, just a, a good takeaway is to tell everybody 
Um, get out of saving all your good stuff. This, this is just a little, what? This is just a little something for you to just kind of carry out on the end of this happy hour. Um, you saving the good towels and you saving the good glasses and the good china and it only comes out when special people arrive. Let me set the captives free real quick. There'll be many days where I will get a drink. Yes, it is an off-brand drink. Judge yourself. And I'm going to check it out. And sometimes I'm going to open it up and I'm going to get me a pretty glass and I'm going to pour me up something in a glass and I'm going to sit and turn me on some music, some calm, some something, some relaxation, some conversation. And I'm going to take me a deep breath and I'm going to enjoy the things for me instead of saving all my good for other people. I just want to help somebody with just today's like takeaway. Stop saving all your best for everybody else. Pull the china out. Take the tag off the towels and stop waiting for company to come. I am the company. I want to enjoy the things that God has blessed me with. Everybody listen. This has been Happy Hour. Do me a favor and go right now and download. Click the link now and download my free ebook um, called Happy New You. Y'all, it's a trip. It's hilarious. It's full of things that are going to add spice to your life. You don't want to miss it. Listen, it's free. Let me change my wording. It's at no cost. Because see, I got this glass in my hand, so I'm talking a little different. <laughs> it's at no cost. Uh, it has been written with you in mind to help you to harness your happy. Don't miss this, guys. Get this right now. Click the link and download it. Whatever you do, I'm telling you right now, stop just waiting on the joy to come in the morning and say, honey, I want at least one hour of my day to be happy.